Finally, one of the most interesting people I ever interviewed was A.E. Hotchner, the St. Louis native who passed away earlier this year at the age of 102. Hotchner wrote 21 books. He wrote for stage. He wrote for television. But to simply call him a writer wouldn't begin to tell the story. So you got to get, you had to touch something, that nerve inside, or you're never going to have a book. The challenge in interviewing Hotchner was that there was so much you could ask him about. Growing up in St. Louis as depicted in his autobiographical novel, King of the Hill, or about his friend, Ernest Hemingway. He wrote about him in the book, Papa Hemingway. Then there was Paul Newman, neighbor and friend. Together they started the Newman's own food line and donated millions to their charities. He wrote a biography of Doris Day and another of Sophia Loren, based on endless hours of interviews. I guess four or five months seeing her every morning from nine to 12. That's not a bad gig. No. <laughs> And she would come in all dressed up. There was never any downplay of her. I'm a movie star. But in fact, Hotchner knew or met so many famous personalities that he wrote a book about that, Choice People. I mean, it's almost like a, a kind of, not a Forrest Gump situation, but that he was, he had a role in so many people's lives. Including Washington University Charles drama Charles and comparative Charles literature Charles professor Charles Henry Chauvet knew Hotchner for years. The most um, significant thing that I, I could say about Hotch, he, he asked me to call him Hotch, so it feels more comfortable to refer to him that way, um, is the man's um, immense generosity of spirit. Hotchner had gone to Washington University after serving in the Army in World War II, and he maintained a relationship with his alma mater. There's a small theater named for him, and his papers are in the university archives, including early drafts of King of the Hill. Read the story of his tough Depression-era experiences, and you begin to understand Hotchner's remarkable life journey. As a boy, he was left alone to live in a room at a hotel at the corner of King's Highway and Delmar. It's now gone. His mother was in the tuberculosis sanitarium. His salesman father was on the road. Once the boy was so hungry, he cut out pictures of food from a magazine and ate them. It wasn't until many years later, successful and with money in the bank, that it all came back. I didn't really have any um, connection with the autobiographical part of my life until one year I decided I should live in Paris for a year. And the more I thought about the life I had way back then during the Depression, and the more I thought about where I was now, eating good French restaurants and living this other life, I began to experience again the things that were happening back way back there. And I think the fact that I was that far away, an ocean away, under a different environment, somehow triggered my thoughts about my own early beginnings. And I think that, um, that King of the Hill is among the most profound uh, memoirs of growing up that I know of. I first began the book. I met Hotchner in 2007 when he was 90 years old. The Missouri Historical Society had reissued King of the Hill, and Hotchner was brought in to speak to a large audience, answer questions, and autograph his books. He also was able to watch some young people perform scenes from King of the Hill. But Hotchner said it wasn't just a new generation of inner city kids who understood his story. He said students in a wealthy San Francisco suburb read the book in class and sent their reactions to him. And these are kids who say, now we've never had a moment's hunger or anything, but we can experience having to survive. Our father is away on board meetings and our mother's busy and we're home alone and we have thoughts of being alone and we have thoughts of neglect. And they singled out in this boy of a time long before they were born in an economy that they couldn't possibly have experienced. And yet they were experiencing something emotionally. And 
you can't imagine the depth of their feelings about the book. So it isn't just kids from bad neighborhoods who identify with being hungry and broke and all that. These kids found emotionally a lot in there that they related to. Yeah. Just survival on a different level. Survival on a different level. He was a, he was a really fascinating interview, one of the favorite interviews that I've ever done. But I know that some people are very good at their public persona, and then privately they might be very different. But then I saw him interact with young people at the Missouri Historical Society, and his interaction with them seemed as genuine yes. as it was when he was sitting down for an interview with me. I think that's a really important point. He was who he was. I mean, I remember having lunch with him, and very, very famous people would stop by and shake his hand. And he, we were Sam Waterston, Neil Simon, uh, people who were, you know, real luminaries. And they would greet him, and then he would be friendly, and then we'd go back to our conversation. There was no change in tone uh, when he was in the presence of these people. There really wasn't. I think he was a truly authentic individual. In my limited time with him in 2007, I wasn't going to let Hotchner go without talking about a fellow Wash U classmate, another aspiring writer who would become known as Tennessee Williams. No, the first contact I had with Tom Lanier Williams, which was his original name, I was editor of the literary magazine at Washington University called The Elliot. And so over the course of um, six issues of the magazine, we must have published a half a dozen of Tennessee's poems. And the next thing I knew, I was in a playwriting class with him called English 16. When Williams' play did not win the class's playwriting competition, he angrily left the class and soon he left Washington University and St. Louis. So we talk about Tennessee Williams and Hotchner at yes. Wash U in the same class. Mm -hmm. Two people with very difficult childhoods yes. in different ways. Williams is famous for turning his back on St. Louis in a way. Yes. And yet Hotchner seemed to have a love affair with St. Louis for the rest of his life. I think that Williams um, clearly resented St. Louis, needed to turn against St. Louis to find who he was. I mean, I know they're different personalities. Yes, and that's, of course, a yeah. huge part of yeah. it. The thing that's remarkable about Hotchner in terms of his character that also helps to answer your question is, um, frankly, a lack of vindictiveness. Um, Tennessee Williams had very strong feelings and anger and uh, um, his response to things and, and to remembering slights in a way that Hotchner did not. His papers oh, Washington the Hotchner archives at so Wash U include material yeah. relating to yeah. Ernest Hemingway. They met when Hotchner was working for Cosmopolitan. Yeah. He was sent to Havana to try to convince Hemingway to write something for the magazine. He fully expected to be turned away. Instead, they had drinks and became fast friends. It just, it occurred to me because um, that Hotch was somebody, although he, we think of him as a, a person of great esteem and somebody who lived a very, very long time, was also looking for a father. And the thing that's very striking to me in looking at King of the Hill is the search for a father. And, um, and in some ways, Hemingway represented at least one avenue of that search. And yet in the conversation you had with him, he said Hemingway was looking for a son. Yeah. That's, I think that that's also true. In 2017, the Washington University Library put out a series of video interviews called Hotch at 100. Although he had slowed down a bit, he still had plenty to say about Hemingway and others, about St. Louis and Wash U, and about the work he and Paul Newman had done for so many kids. The $500 million in charity, all of our profits that Paul and I were able to give. To and I mean, I think with all his writing and over decades and decades, I felt that that was the charitable, the philanthropy in the, in the truest sense of the word was the thing that meant the most to him. 
A. E. Hotchner published his last novel at the age of 100. For all he was, all he had seen and experienced, this last book was another story about a kid from St. Louis.